For today's painting project, we are going to have a little fun and create these loose and lovely pen and ink botanicals. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and on this channel I create art tutorials for beginners with a focus on watercolor and drawing. And today's tutorial is a watercolor one. It's perfect for the absolute beginner. And for those of you that have been here since the beginning, you will recognize this. This is classic Shada painting style. We are going to do some botanicals um, and there'll be a watercolor and pen. So sort of a mixed media. Doing the pen either before or after you paint is a great way to one, add detail when you're not quite comfortable doing it with a paintbrush, and two, save a bad um, painting, frankly, and three, create something that's really unique and beautiful. So um, let's get started and make sure you watch until the end of today's tutorial because I have a little giveaway just to say thanks for being here. Yeah, and thanks for getting creative with me every week. So today I am starting out with a couple pieces of Canson cold pressed water color paper. I've ripped them down to size using a ruler. You can do the same. And then you'll want a couple of artist pens, something that is waterproof like a Pigma Micron, and I've got two of those. So we are going to start just simply by drawing some botanicals. You want to work right in the middle of the, your little piece of paper or as close to the middle as you can manage. This particular project is not at all specific to the types of leaves that you draw. You could do anything that your imagination can conjure up. Um, but if you want to follow along, the one that I'm drawing is really just made up of these sort of scraggly leaves and these tiny little berries. So I just keep moving out and doing more stems and more branches and adding um, all these leaves. And you can see here, I'll put some of them on a bit of a stem and then I add these tiny little berries so it's just made up of the two forms really and I tend to kind of continue to reshape the leaf or the branch as I go along so I'll make it oh okay I'm gonna make it a little longer or a little taller and as I move down the page towards myself I tend to flush it out more so I'll allow these branches that are coming off the main stem I'll allow them to go out a little further towards the edges of the page so that way I get a nice full uh, leaf design so we'll set that one aside for now and the next one that I'm going to do is a seeded eucalyptus this is one that I go back to again and again start with just a little line and at the top of that branch or stem you're going to do these tiny seeds and then a couple of small leaves and then it's the same idea you keep adding more and more branches coming off of that main stem and the uh, leaves can get a little larger as you move down the page towards yourself. And you can add those little seeds uh, wherever you like. I'm end adding them at um, sort of the end of a few of the branches here. And I just keep adding more leaves and more leaves and I overlap them. There some are tucked in behind others and I think that gives a nice natural look and just wherever you need a little more detail, you can add those tiny seeds. And I think the combination of the rounded oval leaves with the tiny, almost angular seeds um, is really nice. And you end up with this beautifully detailed plant on the page when you're all done. So that's finished. We'll set that one aside as well. And we are going to draw one more together. Now this one is probably the simplest. It is just starts with this long line down the center for the stem. And then again, I'm just coming down the page towards me, adding these long thin oval leaves they're all a little different they're very perfectly imperfect and I put a line down the center of each or the not so center of each and I just keep adding more and more adding little branches um, making it slightly fuller at the bottom of the page um, but super simple as I said it's not about um, these particular designs you could draw anything and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some some watercolor paint. I'm using my Genuine Crafts set today, but you could use any watercolors that you have on hand. I 
I've mixed up a nice simple, uh, really a medium green for this first one. And I am just going to start creating a puddle. So you want to mix up your watercolors quite loose and watery. You can always add water directly to the page for this because we want it to look messy. We want it to look a little wrong. We want paint to sit heavily in some areas of the puddle and not so heavily in others. So some areas will be quite opaque and some will be very translucent. Um, and what you see me doing here is really just trying to make a mess, but deliberately to a deliberate mess that looks nice. So I'm just thinking about the shape of the puddle. I want to work not not rushing, but a little bit quickly because I don't want any areas to dry as I'm working. I want them to all blend together seamlessly. So the addition of the paint probably only took me about two or three minutes. Um, and I do some little spots, some little areas where I want it to look like a little um, dot of paint just hit. So there's little bubbles of paint on the side. And I'm just doing my best to make that deliberate mess where some areas um, are lighter and you can always take off a little bit of paint by using a dry brush and some areas are darker and uh, yeah just don't overthink it is all I can say and try to do it within two or three minutes. Now for the next one I sometimes like to mix a little purple into my green to get this nice minty green uh, and then I am just gonna let that very loose watery minty green hit the page and we'll just work it around moving the paint and the water around with our brush adding a little extra pigment in some areas a little extra water in other areas and uh, just trying to make this puddle look nice if that makes sense um, but really don't overthink it and I think it'll come together really nicely. These puddles also make great uh, greeting cards if you ever need a quick and easy greeting card just throwing down a puddle of paint and then you can do a little hand lettering project or something over top like a birthday message. For the last one, I just mixed up yet another shade of green and this one I'm following the drawing a little more closely. You can see I'm kind of moving with the leaves and uh, the stem and not going for as much of a puddle, but still quite a messy, um, messy bit of watercolor. And actually as I finished this one, I decided to um, sort of move that color out a little bit and I kind of made the top area a little more puddle-like. So the bottom's a little tighter to the drawing and then at the top here, the watercolor sort of blooms out into this messy puddle and I like how that looks. So just playing, experimenting. Um, and yeah, we are going to let those dry and we're going to try something else. This is one more way that you can approach this project. What I'm doing here is trying my best to do a nice leaf design and uh, this is basically <laughs> how I came up with this technique was that when I started painting I was never really satisfied with the um, florals that I saw on the page. They didn't turn out the way I had envisioned in my mind and I was always a little disappointed. I couldn't get the detail that I wanted to and I couldn't get the shading right. So when that would happen with my watercolor paintings I would just wait for them to dry and then I would add the painting or not the painting painting then I would add the pen on top so for me it was a real way to save my paintings and to enjoy watercolors before I was really um, proficient at them so anytime I was like oh that just doesn't look the way I want it to I would just add my Pigma Micron over top and I still love the way that looks so once I'm done that one, I'm going to let it dry and now it is dry <laughs> through the magic of YouTube. And so, um, yes, so this one, I think it looks fine, but I don't know, that black line that we get with a Sharpie or a Pigma Micron, it really just makes the whole illustration or the whole painting pop. It adds, uh, it sort of brings it to life is what I always say. It's just this crisp black line. It adds a wonderful illustrative quality to your paintings. Um, and like I said, you can add that detail that you might not otherwise be comfortable doing with a paintbrush. Um, so all I've done there is just 
followed the painting, gone over the leaves, added some veining, and then I always like to add a few extras, and I think that gives just a fun look um, to the overall piece. So there's a couple extra ones there and a little bit of extra veining. And then these ones have dried now, and I find the paint always looks a little different dry than it does wet, especially these puddles. Um, so they're really fun to look at when they are dry and to sort of see that deliberate mess, to see how it came out. And with that all done, let's talk the giveaway. We are giving away a set of watercolor paints from Genuine Crafts, as well as a paper pad from Canson, so you can do this craft yourself. And all you have to do to enter is leave a comment below letting me know what is your favorite art supply. And uh, I think we've asked that one before, but that's okay. <laughs> We're collecting data, just kidding. Um, yes, favorite art supply, and then make sure to subscribe and turn those notifications on. Thanks so much for entering, guys. Contest closes August 6th and I will see you soon with a new tutorial.